Hello YouTube, Cyber City H here. Hope you're doing really good. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a recent backdoor account that was found in some Zixel products. Now, Zixel make routers, switches, firewalls, and VPNs, all that kind of good stuff, and identifying user accounts on the underlying operating system of these devices, which are undocumented and have root access, would be a pretty big deal. And that's exactly what some Dutch researchers recently found. In this case, the root account was also accessible over SSH and via the web GUI. And so if these devices were internet facing and accessible, and many were and probably still are, then that would mean anyone with the knowledge of these underlying hard-coded user credentials could fully compromise the device itself. And that's bad news all round. So how do we find these types of accounts? Well, firstly, we need to examine the firmware of the products themselves. And oftentimes that's not quite as easy as it may sound. In this case, Zixel firmware is a zip file protected with a password and we as security researchers don't have that password. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the concept of a known plain text attack that we can perform to bypass the password for this particular zip file so we can then study the underlying firmware code. And we're gonna use some free and open source software to do this. And it's actually really easy to do once you understand some key core principles. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so now we're at the stage here where we've got the firmware in our terminal window here. I've just listed out the files. Let me just clear things up so you can see it just a little bit. So we've got a few files here. We've got a bin file, comp file, db file, PDF, and also another PDF, which I'm presuming is some instructions. All good. And uh, let me just kind of rewind a little bit. So let's just flip over to Chrome here. And so this is the original article that I was referencing where I was looking at the write-up here from Kathleen Kipanu. And you should definitely follow Kathleen on Twitter if you don't already because you'll be well up to speed on the, the latest and greatest in this cyber threat landscape, what's going on in the world and what you should know about. And so I picked the article up from here, from ZDNet, which said that more than 100,000 six or firewalls, gateways and access points uh, contain a hard-coded admin level backdoor account. Well, that certainly got my taste buds going a little bit there. And I wanted to see, you know, how you know, this kind of situation comes about and how you can poke around this stuff. And I'm by no means an expert in by any stretch of the imagination looking at embedded devices and operating systems of that nature. But what I thought was interesting to share with you is just my little journey here for actually getting to the stage of being able to examine the firmware of these devices. So we've got the product lines which are, are affected. So I signed up for a free account with my Zixel here so I could go onto their downloads portal and just you know whatever model number we wanted we can download the firmware for so I've not downloaded the latest patch because what they've actually done is removed the vulnerable firmware versions from the uh, this downloads browser here this this kind of portal so that's unfortunate so we can't get our hands on the actual vulnerable firmware anymore but what i thought would be interesting is just to have a look to see whether or not the user account which is being talked about and referenced in these blog posts actually exists within these previous firmware versions which are on the website so i just chose a usg flex 100 at random downloaded this and here also as well is the original write-up from icontrol.nl showing that uh a uh, bit more detail really about the particular user accounts uh, and in this particular case the user account is zyfwp which is an admin account has the ability to ssh in and then also you can access this via the web gui logon as well so you can see here that they were surprised that the user account with a password hash in the latest firmware 4.60 patch 0 so notice here this is 4.60 patch 1 so we don't get patch 0 unfortunately that the plain text password was visible in one of the binaries on the system and it was even more surprised that it works on ssh and the web interface so really interesting research top draw there from eye control and obviously if you have a zixor device you should definitely update your firmware anyway so we've got the firmware what i'm interested in here is this bin file and so if you run file uh, if you spell it right if you run file on the actual bin file you can see that it says it's a zip file so but if you try and unzip uh the bin file 
you can't because it's actually password protected. So what I would do is let's go in here. Uh, is actually just flip over to Windows, copy it over into my Windows machine here, and then just use 7-Zip to browse the archive. So we can see what's in the archive itself, although it's password protected. So like I'll just, again, prove, just kind of prove to you here, if I was trying to extract it, I need to enter some kind of password. I don't know what the password is, and it's obviously going to fail, but it would give you the folder structure there and all the rest of it if you did that. But what it doesn't give you is the file sizes. But if you just do, if you were just going to browse the the archive within 7-Zip, you can see here that we've got file sizes and folder sizes, as well as obviously the the underlying uh, structure, the file names, etc. So we can see that within this archive there are numerous files, you know, bin, other bin files. There's compressed our image, which is the most tastiest, and so is, is one we'd want to pay attention to. But what we really want to do here, we're focused on a known plain text attack. Uh, and what I mean by that is if we know some of the plain text that appears in the encrypted text here, and in, by encrypted text, what I mean is obviously this this whole binary, if you were just to stick it in in a, a, a hex editor and see all of the hex de, hexadecimal uh, notation here, you, this is all encrypted content, right? So we need the password to decrypt the content of this zip file. But we don't have that password. But if we know some of the plain text that exists in this cipher text, then it becomes easier to to guess or to bypass what that password would be to crack the algorithm, if you like. And so, because it's encrypted using a standard uh, zip algorithm, PK zip. That is known to be, uh, I say vulnerable, I wouldn't, it's probably the wrong word, but uh, it's known to be a cipher which isn't particularly strong. And if you do know a decent portion of the plain text within the encrypted text, then it is possible to, to break down the barriers of that password and bypass it fairly trivially. So that's what we're gonna explore today. So what do we know? Let's focus on what we do know. So if we do, let me uh, uh, bypass my alias there because I generally, you notice if I run ls, I have an alias set up in my terminal window to output the file sizes in human readable form because ordinarily I'm interested in, I just want to know what a file size is in, in real money. So 144 meg or 26K, 4.7 meg, et cetera. But actually, we want to get as much information as possible. So a little slash before ls there will bypass my alias. Uh, and so I get the byte count of the file sizes. And we can see here that I've got a comp file, a doc comp file, which is in plain text. And so if I was to cut that out, you can see that it's in uh, plain text. And so that's interesting. So I've got a comp file, I've got a DB file, etc. But pay attention to this size, 26729. Now let's flip back to our Windows 7 here. And we can see that we have in, instantly in our shown to our, our attention here, the DB folder, the size is 26729. And so it's all, you know, that's obviously a folder it contains something. So we go drill down, there's nothing in it, nothing in it, nothing in it except for other folders until we get to a dot comp file, system default dot comp. And it's exactly the same size as what we have here, this 455abuh0c0.conf. And that is the name of the firmware, right? The firmware version, that's why it's .conf there. So we don't know that it's the same, but it's a very, very striking resemblance to have two files exactly the same size. One appears in the plain text and one appears in the cipher text. Uh, and so that's a real good starter for us because we think, well, you know, the overwhelming likelihood here, here is that these are the same file. So if we know 26 kilobytes of plain text that appears in this encrypted file, well, there is a tool out there which we can use to uh, to break this down for us because that's an awful lot of, of ciphertext that we're able to take a chunk at knowing the plain text behind it. Okay, so before we dive into the tool, I just wanted to bring your attention to this paper, which I'll link to in the description called Zip Attacks with Known 
uh, reduced known plain text from Michael Stay of Access Data, an amazing paper. If you wanted to get right into the weeds of this, of the kind of cryptology here and the cryptographic attack that we're performing, but there's some work which is demonstrated by a couple of guys, Bio and Kosho, that demonstrates that PKZip is a stream cipher that's weak and presents an attack if you know a minimum of 13 bytes of plain text. Apparently, it makes it super or well, a lot easier to uh, to get past the password protection. Now we've got 26 kilobytes, which is a, an enormous amount compared to 13 bytes. So no doubt we'll be able to speed up this attack to no end. And so you can go into the weeds here, but effectively zip archivers themselves will convert the, the password that you give them into three 32-bit encryption keys. So if you just had a zip file, you will know nothing of the password that was used because it's not stored anywhere or anything like that. It's converted at the time that uh, you actually use that password in the zip archiver itself into three 32-bit encryption keys. And then it uses those keys to encrypt the whole archive. And so the whole complexity, so we've got three 32-bit keys, the whole complexity of the attack is two to the power 96, which is a, a ridiculous number and would require a ridiculous amount of computing power to brute force. So if you have an encrypted file, which is encrypted using the same zip archiver, and the same file in on encrypted form, and in this case, we can replicate those conditions, then some super smart people have written a tool, which is well beyond my comprehension, that makes some baffling com calculations and will retrieve those encryption keys used to protect that file. And so if you have the keys for one file, it's the same keys that will protect every single file within the zip archive itself. So let's flip over to our terminal window again. And the tool we're going to use to perform this known plain text attack is pkcrack. Have a look at the options. We need to feed it a cryptid file, and we also need it to feed it a plain text file. And in this particular case, we're going to actually feed it the encrypted zip archive first. So what we need to do first off to replicate the attack conditions is to zip up the comp file using the same compression method that the bin file has been compressed with. Now. In real world scenarios, this is you know a little bit of trial and error. But in this particular case, what we need to do is just use the zip utility on the command line, but with a slight modification to our options here. So have a look at the help file here for zip, the zip command itself. We need to use this dash nine compress better to get the most amount of compression in the zip itself. So let's zip dash nine. We're just gonna call it plain text.zip for now. Uh, we need to zip this comp file. So we can do that and we've got this plain text.zip. Now what we need to do is extract it. Now, if you've installed PK crack, then you will have an extract tool in this particular location. And I pasted it here because it's not in my path. So what we need to do is extract plain text.zip from or the comp file from plain text.zip. And that's going to be that. And we're just going to call that. Let's just call it dot plain text for now. So we should have this dot plain text and that's extracted from the zip archive that we made using the same compression method. Now that's what we're going to feed to PK crack. Let me clear my screen a little bit here. So let's go to PK crack. What we need to do to help again. So I need to feed uh, dash C and I need to feed it the name of the encrypted bin file we're interested in. So we use this one. There we go. And then I need to feed it the path. So dash C, small case, uh, lowercase c, is the cryptid file itself. And so in this particular case, we need to feed it the full path from our 7-zip archive. So that's db, etsy, zixl, ftp, conf, and then systemdefault.conf. That's, that's what we want to, or we know is the, or we think we know at least at this moment in time, is the encrypted version of our plain text. And then feed it our plain text, which is, uh, in this particular case, this file, which is what we just archived. I'm going to save it as crack.zip and then in dash a just means abort any searches after you've found success let's hit go pk crack gets to work and we can see that it starts to reduce the number of keys and it's going to find various different values for those three encryption keys and start working its way through and it takes just a matter of seconds as we can see we're finished clear my screen and we can see i've now got crack.zip so let's unzip uh, crack.zip and we'll just put it into cracked. Um, awesome. Let's CD into cracked. And there we go. Now we've got the full file system 
or the, the files rather that we're in that encrypted bin file we've managed to bypass the password protection and we have it all now i said to you earlier this is the file that was most interested in is the compressed image you can see it's 83 megabytes and so if we just did file on compressed image you can see it's squash fs so again i'm using a macbook here so you can install squash fs using brew and then with that comes a command called unsquash fs and if you just unsquash you get a few errors because it tries to like sim link to um, areas on the the root of my macbook here but you can see i've got now got this file here this sorry this folder squash fs root change directory into into that there we go and now we're at the the file system here's the underlying file system i can go into etsy for example if i go into zixel and then go into sys um here we can see there's the the password basic file and in this particular firmware you can see that the user name uh, the account in question of this backdoor account actually does exist in older firmware versions and so the vulnerable version that was removed from zixel's download portal contained the password for this account in plain text in a different binary now i've done some grep in and all the rest of it and i can't seem to find it so what well, i haven't tested though is whether the same password works on these previous versions or not or whether or not it even has a password but uh, anyway there's all sorts of poking around that you can do now and what you could probably do with these files now is actually run something like qemu the quick emulator to emulate this environment that's needed to host this operating system and you could interact with it live and do some further analysis outside the scope of this video but now you've got all of, all of the bits and bobs that you need to get going with additional analysis on this particular firmware there you have it we've taken a quick look there at how we can bypass the zip password for an encrypted archive to lead us to some underlying firmware so we can then perform some additional analysis and it's a really interesting world when you start getting into this environment of looking at what is actually running on these embedded systems. And as these Dutch researchers have found, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful things that we can find that we should definitely be aware of. And I'm really looking forward to more research in this area and also getting more involved in this kind of analysis as well. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really means a lot. If you want to see more, please subscribe, hit the notification button as well so you can know when I post new videos. And also you can join in with the conversation on Twitter. You can follow me at CyberCDH and I really look forward to chatting with you there. Take it easy guys, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.